Welcome uh, to Sly Media TV and uh, welcome to the candidate. I want to welcome you from wherever you are and uh, say that uh, please go ahead and uh, like our page, Sly Media TV, and you can also encourage others uh, to like our page, follow us, so that you don't miss the programs that we bring you every now and then on uh, this platform. Like I said, we bring you the candidate. This we are going to be doing until probably uh, even after 2023, you know, we started this program before the by-elections and we were looking at uh, the by-elections. After the by-elections, we had reflections on the by-elections. Now we're moving into 2023 and we are forecasting on to uh, 2023 elections. And to say, what is happening in the body polity of uh, this country? And we are going to be interrogating manifestos we are going to be interrogating plans we are going to be interrogating uh, ideologies that are coming from uh, political parties tonight on the program we have uh, a new political party that was launched uh, at the weekend and uh, this uh, political party is called the national people's congress and uh, we have on uh, the program the interim president engineer wilbert mubaiwa we're going to be talking to him about uh, issues uh, that concern uh, their plans as a political party, as a new political party. I know that uh, uh, launching their political party, they are going to be contesting in the 2023 elections. And we want to know what it is that they have prepared uh, for the electorate, for the Zimbabwean people, for the citizens, so that uh, we see uh, what they have up their sleeves. Before we go straight into the discussion tonight, we are going to take a short break and when we return, we're going to go straight into the discussion and issues that we have. When you think of having the best, world-class, hassle-free, corporate or personal events, Think Real Sound, offering a wide range of products and services with different sizes for LED and TV screens to suit different occasions. There are state-of-the-art PA systems that give you Real Sound. When it comes to event lighting, Real Sound is the best, not to mention the Sparkles machines. Want to appear in another planet? Try the Cloud and Smoke machines. There's also top executive furniture for corporate events. For all your virtual meetings, look no further. Get in touch for a free quote for your next event. Contact Real Sound via email or phone number. Real Sound, just passion. When you think of having. Welcome back uh, to the candidate and welcome back uh, to Sly Media TV. Uh, like I said uh, on uh, the program tonight, uh, we have uh, engineer Wilbert uh, Mubaiwa, and he is the interim president of uh, the new political party that was launched at the weekend the National People's Congress. I want to welcome you to the program and uh, welcome to Sly Media TV. Engineer, how are you? I'm fine. Pleasure. Yes. Uh, now, let's go straight into issues. Uh, we want to start uh, by uh, finding out from you. You launched the party over the weekend, the National People's Congress. Um, we want you to tell us what the party is all about. The party, first and foremost, is about changing the political landscape mm. of this country. It's about changing the behavior of politics in general. Mm -hmm. And we think it can be achieved. Because first and foremost, I said at the weekend, that confrontation, violence, misunderstanding, lack of dialogue, they start at your mouth. Mm -hmm. What you say is very important. Respect is very important. And I talked about Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. I want to repeat what I said in the afternoon somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Ubuntu, to me and to us as NPC, is a concept that is above democracy. And that if Africans were to practice it, mm -hmm. the way they created it, they would not be in a situation where they are now. Mm -hmm. Where media, to them, is an enemy. Where media is something that is trying to peep holes into what they are trying to do. Yeah. We would see it as something that is going to add value to what we are trying to do. Anyone who brings in a different idea, no matter how contrary, adds value. Mm. There is always a positive me message from any ne negative idea. Mm. There is something positive that you get out of it. So we are saying 
if we change the way we do politics, if we change the way we look at ourselves and look at others, mm -hmm. then we'll move forward. I will tell you how we started. When we started, the idea was to, to say, can we join other political parties? Mm. Is there space for us? Are we able to change their ideologies? Are we able to change their ideas? And the consensus was, we can't. Then we said at the time, therefore, do we think there is need for a third force? We called it a third force. Because we looked at everyone else and said, mm -hmm. they got 2,000 votes, the president got 5,000 votes. So they are not a force. Because collectively, the 21 parties, other than M MDC, the alliance at the time, and the PF, they got 3.56%. And we compared it to Makoni, who got 8.5%. Mm -hmm. And we said Makoni was able to change this country. People may not see it, but his 8.5% is the one that brought about the government of national unity. And we said, if we can do the same, we don't have to get into power. That's what we said at the time. We don't have to harass anyone. But if we can do that and change this country and bring about some kind of unity, like what we win witnessed mm -hmm. the 2009 to 2013, yep. then we would have changed the lives of people of this country. Mm -hmm. That was our minimum objective. But then we said, we also need to change the way we operate. Our analysis, and we, we did a survey. We went throughout the 10 provinces from February 5, 2019, mm -hmm. to the 12th of, of March, 2022. Mm -hmm. That's when we went around the country. And we said, the failure to achieve change in this country is because both sides of politics are not getting it right. Mm. We have a, a, a spirit of confrontation. We should eliminate that. We have a spirit of fighting amongst ourselves as opposition. We need to change that. And how do we change that? By respecting each other's views. Mm -hmm. By getting out of the name calling issues. Yeah. You can't really call someone a fool. I've heard people being called fool. A politician calling another politician a fool. If we get out of that, we therefore remove confrontation. Mm -hmm. I said, let's allow dialogue between supporters of divergent views. Let's allow them to sit down and talk and share so that they can see a path for themselves, a path where they can all fit. Yeah. And we said, if we are going to do that and allow it amongst ourselves to talk to each other openly as opposition, as a ruling party, amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. we can be able to see a path for each other because we don't talk. We can't see that path. So we, say, we therefore said, we we'll start by encouraging dialogue among opposing and divergent views. Mm -hmm. We will not force it, we encourage it. But we we'll also talk about it to the population of this country to say, this is where we are getting lost. Mm -hmm. And we said, our discussions must be development focused. They must not be forced, faced, uh, based on an individual. Sorry for giving this example. Yeah. I, I will not focus on the president of this country. Because he is not our issue. Our issue is the country. Mm -hmm. I will not focus in terms of what I say on the leader of an opposition party. He is not my target. My target is this country, is the development of this country. But I will focus on his ideas. If I can agree with him, mm. that, that, that's fine with me. I will not describe what the president has done wrong. I will describe what we think we will do right. If the people can infer from our statements that something was done wrong, mm. it's up to them. But we'll describe what we're going to do, how we are going to do it, how we think this country can move forward. Mm. If they think what was done in the past did not take it forward, it's up to them to infer. But we'll give it to them fair and square and say this is what we are going to do. First, on, first and foremost, I think what lacks in so, this country. Yeah. Uh, I want us to deal with that question um, just now. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you, you say that uh, you're not going to be uh, focusing on the, the failures, yes. right, of other political parties or the ruling parties, uh, the ruling parties, ANUPF, as it were, and the president. Mm -hmm. uh, how then are we going to be able to, to, to deal or to take corrective measures on the issues that, uh, because we know politicians, as you are coming uh, in, you, you promise that this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to do. How are we going to uh, make sure that you account, you are accountable to the promises that you would have made but if we don't point out the, the failures? If we were to point out the failures, 
Yeah. It's to repeat what people have seen. It's, to, it's telling people what they know. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what has gone wrong in this country. There is unemployment. Mm -hmm. Our education is on, yes, but is it relevant? Mm -hmm. The relationships between institutions and the population is non-existent. All that is known. People who go into the street and shout, Zek is like this. Mm -hmm. The army is like this. The police is like this. But our question is, are we pointing the finger at the right object? Or we are wrong? Mm. That's where we correct people. But what is wrong is known by everyone, mm. including those who have done wrong. They know it. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about what we should do, which will result in no wrong being done, even the one who did wrong will know, oh, they are going to change this. So in other words, we are not going to talk about what people already know. We are going to talk about what we think those who have done, who have run this country before, did not know or did not do well. Mm -hmm. That's what we are going to focus on. Mm -hmm. And by inference, people will know. Because the moment you start talking about someone at a rally, you are campaigning for that person in a way. Mm -hmm. I come from Guru, very close to Dandi. Mm -hmm. Someone was telling me a few days ago that people in Bire, did not know Changrai. But when people started saying down with Changrai and so forth, they started questioning, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. You see that? But that's not my main reason. My main reason is, if I'm going to talk about an individual and leave people to analyze my opinions and perceptions of an individual, it does not tell them what I will do for them. Mm. It tells them what the kind of person probably they don't want or they want. Because what you're going to talk about that person Someone likes it, and the other person doesn't like it. Mm. But there is a common factor amongst us, a factor of lack of progress, mm. a factor of inequity, a factor of injustice, factors of lack of freedom, yeah. where you cannot walk in the street and criticize something, and you don't get punished, or someone, not necessarily by the authorities, mm. by the person next, walking next to you, who tell you, I don't like that. It happens every day. Mm. People shout at you, but don't do that. You see, when you just talk, speak your mind. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that's the politics we want to change. Through Ubuntu, we want people to realize that they are one. They are mm -hmm. one. We are the way of doing things. Yeah. And the basic thing about Ubuntu is respect. Mm -hmm. Democracy does not talk about respect. It talks about human rights. Yeah. But we are saying if you don't respect Shoman, mm -hmm. how can you then accord him his human rights? His rights. Rights must start with respect. So they must start with Ubuntu. Mm. Maybe if we talk to the people of Africa about Ubuntu and then talk about human rights, mm. they will understand that what they are being asked to do is what they've always done, mm. but in a different language. Yeah, so, so, so let's explore that a, a little bit, the, the Ubuntu uh, ideology mm -hmm. uh, as an African ideo political ideology to say that uh, one of the tenets of uh, that uh, ideology is respect, as you say. Um, is this a political party advocating for a change in the political ideology that we have as a country, the, democ the democratic uh, ideology, and to say you want to do away with the democracy, uh, as an ideology to then uh, take up uh, Ubuntu. We are not saying that. We are mm. saying if the son does not respect the father mm -hmm. or if the father respects the son and accords him his freedom, the, the son will live in the house. Mm -hmm. The father is Ubuntu. The son is democracy. Democracy is part of Ubuntu, not the other way around. So we are bringing a layer that was missing in democracy, mm. a layer of respect. Democracy remains, but we enrich it by what comes from our own cultural background, our own practices as Africans. You see, Ubuntu was shown very clearly in 1895. Mm. I want to touch on a bit of something that people might think is thorny. It's not. Yeah. Before... 1895, we had heard our skirmishes 
amongst ourselves, the mm. dynasties. I don't want to call them tribes. Yes. I don't believe we've mm. got tribes. I want to call them dynasties. Dynasties, yeah. Dynasties, they did skirmishes amongst themselves. And there was a particular skirmish between the, the southern and western part of the country mm -hmm. and the rest of the country. And we were fighting each other. Probably had just come from the south. And we, and we were here, some people had come from everywhere. But when we were about to be colonized, when the whites came and they wanted to take over everything that belongs to us, mm -hmm. we stopped the skirmishes between us and joined in unity to fight colonization. The common enemy. The common enemy. Mm -hmm. Which means there are common values amongst us. So what do we need to do? We, we think there was integration mm. of ideas at the time. What is lacking is integration. We can't work together. If I hear the name Tlongwani, mm. it's not the same as Mbaya. I say, where do you come from? Mm. It must be from South Africa or somewhere. Mm. I'm beginning to segregate. Mm. So we are saying, let's integrate. Let's be able to work together. Because without that, we cannot define anything among, in front of us that we can call unity. Mm. If we can't work together, you can't unite with that person. Mm. But we could work together in 1895 and 86, mm. which means we are able to unite. Yeah. And, and, if we, and this is very important that you are raising the issue of uh, unity yes. and uh, taking it back to 1895. Now, uh, the question that uh, then will come is, why are you then going on to form a political party? Why are you not practicing these things and just go into the uh, political parties that are there already and deal with this question of uh, Ubuntu, the bringing in another layer uh, into democracy. You cannot gather people at a particular point without permission in this country. If you are going to gather a certain number of people and talk about a concept that is not religious and so forth, if you are not preaching to people, mm. you may not. I'll give you an example. When I was at the university, mm. uh, Chakahodza, Bonwell, yeah. he had just come from England and others. Mm. We formed an association for the development of much Central. And we started sitting together with Thomas Mafumo, eh, Bonio Chakawaza, and others. Yeah. After our third meeting, we were told you can't proceed. We think you want to start a political party. But I was a staunch supporter of Zanpio. In fact, I used to sing at uh, some of the informal gatherings at school, especially in school. <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> well, I was a, a young, vibrant young man, and mm. uh, so many of my others were coming to visit. They yeah. were not yet independent. So when they came, especially when I was at Fletcher, yeah. we would actually lead the singing, welcoming these people to Ascot Stadium. Mm. So, so my question is, what happened to that vibrant young man who was a staunch supporter of Sanu PF, who I, today uh, is an interim president of a, a, an opposing political party? I never really wanted to be in actual politics. <laughs> yeah. It was never my idea until I was 53 years old. But after that incident, mm. I said, what does this mean? We want to develop our province, mm. and people think you want to form a political party. So I left it. I, I did not begrudge anyone. Mm. But as things went on, I could see that uh, there was some stifling of opinion along the way. Some of it I supported it, because when you are not mature politically, you can rejoice when an individual next to you is being stifled mm. until it comes to you. But really what I uh, work the monster, the political monster in me, mm. I don't know if I can say this it, it was the firing of my mature. Not that she was fired, mm. but I didn't like the process. I said, how can certain people just stand at a given meeting and then say she's a sellout, she's like this? Mm. And the entire leadership agrees with that assertion made at that particular point and fire a vice president. Mm. Is that the weakness? of our institutions? Is that the weakness of our governance systems? So I took our politics purely on that basis, mm -hmm. but then discovered root shock along the way that it's not easy. Even the guy you think you're supporting may not even be supporting you. Mm -hmm. So I was not a politician. I was just excited independence had come. Everyone was excited, some mm -hmm. to their own detriment, others to their own good. Yeah. We became independent of various things. Others died, others, and so forth. So nothing really was killed and nothing, something was awakened. Mm -hmm. And when I 
I, I, I moved around the country with you. I saw a different nation. You know, every province, especially when you talk about the western part of the country. When, when you say, when you moved around the country with you, yeah. is, is this uh, saying that you were part of the NP? Yes, I was. Okay. And I was elected treasurer general. Okay. It, but that did not come to fruition because then they said, no, you are not the one we wanted. But I had been elected. Mm. Yeah. So I said, what does democracy mean? I then wrote a letter to my majority and they said, maybe what I hoped for is not what I got. Maybe I, what I thought we were trying to create, a democratic institution, mm. is not what we are creating. So there is no place for me. Let me walk out. Mm. That's the letter I wrote. Uh, how did you feel? How did you feel when you were elected into a position and you were told you can't uh, take up the position? I, I was confused. I didn't know what was happening. I talked to people. People talked to me about it. Mm. You were saying, what happened? Why were you not confirmed at the Congress? Mm. I said, I don't know. And uh, they thought I had an answer. But there are the same people after the elections of 2018 mm. who were still in NPP who came to me and said, we think you should come back to NPP. I said, I can't. I resigned. Mm -hmm. There are processes of joining an organization and rejoining an organization. Mm -hmm. I might be needed to go through some hearing to explain why I had resigned. Yeah. And I'm not prepared to go through that. Okay. So I said, no. After that, then they said, so what do we do? We mm -hmm. need change. I said, if we are going to move forward, let's consult the people of this country, yeah. province by province. Are they ready for something different? Hmm. Because we might stand here as six people yeah. and start something and think that people are, are ready for it when they are not. Hmm. So we therefore traveled around the country. But our philosophy was we just identify one man in each province hmm. who can start identifying other leaders. And in that province, they agree or disagree on the way forward. So each province had to consult itself. And we had to coordinate that consultation. Hmm. Yeah. We didn't want any influence from one province to another province. Yeah. We thought that was improper. Because you're imposing your ideas on a people. Yeah. Even if you are, we are one people as a nation, but within a household and the next household, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Opinions differ. Mm -hmm. So we said, let's look at these opinions. Luckily for us, 90% said we need to start a new organization that is different. We still meet opposition. People say we should be angry with people. I said, no. We still meet politicians who have come to join us who say, no, we can't just be nice. We can't just be this. Let's go and tell them what they've done wrong. Let's say bad words about them. I said, no. Mm. When you say bad words against a bad person, you become a bad person. Mm. Say nice things to them. Maybe some of them might decide to join. Go and be nice to supporters of every party. Mm. Discuss open, uh, ideas, share ideas. Maybe they might convince you to join them, or you might, con you, you might convince them to join you. Mm -hmm. And they say, but what, we will we'll be losing supporters. And I said, no. Zimbabwe will be gaining ground to unity, to integration. It's not about you getting into government. Mm -hmm. It's about you causing change, being an agent of change, even from outside government. And that's the message we're giving. All my messages is on my, because I see these messages of angry people on our chat groups. And I wait until the end of the day or the middle of the day and I respond. I say, no, mm. we are not going that route. So do you think that the, the electorate um, has uh, um, matured enough to a level where they will understand the kind of uh, uh, political behavior that you are preaching? Because what we've seen is that uh, uh, our politics is uh, politics of personalities where if you are a popular leader, then people follow you. Do you think that our people now understand politics to that level? I think they do. Popularity is something that you create yourself. Mm. A new concept is, uh, first of all, if you are a ZANPF strong supporter, mm. and your leader is being shouted by another strong supporter of another party, yeah. you will become closer to your, to, your pre to your president, to your leader. And the same happens to that. But we are, if we are saying, if we are centralist, mm. and we bring in the good values from both sides of the political divide, and our own values, we'll be able to take a few from every side. Mm. And we know there are others. We have never liked this behavior. 
and they've stayed away. You have to ask yourself, how come 30% of the people in Harare did not vote? The most enlightened. Mm -hmm. They saw something which they didn't like. And we are saying if we are creating a new path, first of all, we'll take those in that could not vote because there was no choice for them. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, we'll take those that are coming in that are new completely, that is just registered, who are like the ones who didn't vote. And we are saying that one is one firms a sizable percentage, which is slightly larger than what Macaulay got. Mm -hmm. If we can get them, 100% of them, mm -hmm. or if we can get 60% of them, we get at least 8%, which is what Macaulay got. Mm -hmm. But if we proceed further and say that there are people who like their country, we have been voting despite the uncertainty surrounding the outcome of the vote or the outcome of what comes out of the government, mm -hmm. they will come to us. And if we put that at the same percentage, then probably we are at 16, 17%. Mm. It doesn't take you into government. Because that's not our minimum objective. Mm. Our minimum objective is to cause change. And, so, and for you to be able to, to get those numbers, the, 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 the 8%, 17% that you're talking about, obviously there is a lot of work that needs to be done. I mean, you are going into a field where you have uh, political parties that were formed in 1963, as an example. Mm -hmm. Political parties that have been running this country and... Uh, they have things to show, things that they have been doing. And people, obviously, they look at what it is that you bring to them to vote for you. You see, I'll give you an example of a mature company, mm -hmm. a company that has grown. I think you know them. Mm -hmm. Generally, when a, a company is mature, don't expect any new employment into that company. Expect mm -hmm. employment to replace those that are dying, those that are retiring, mm -hmm. and so forth. There is a limit to which any concept can grow mm. before it is challenged. Mm. And we think the time, both in terms of the opposition that we have and the parties that have run this country, that time has come to challenge that status quo. Because people have seen that we are going back on. You look at the xenophobic attacks in South Africa mm. and you want to blame South Africans. No, I blame it on poverty. Mm -hmm. And I blame poverty on lack of development in this country. Because when you can't develop, when you can't grow your maize field, you obviously must go and look for food somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And we are going to South Africa to look for food. Because South Africa can see their economy also sliding. I read their papers, and that's why I get the idea. Mm -hmm. They think you'll finish whatever left will be left of them, for them. So they will attack you, not because they don't like you. South Africa loves us, I know that. We love each other as Africans. But when it comes to poverty, that's where the, the, the fight comes. Mm -hmm. Just to go to a madman who is holding his food and try to take it, he will fight you. Mm. That's the politics of the stomach. So, so, so we are identifying that poverty is uh, at the center of all the misery that uh, we're seeing. Um, uh, your party, how are you uh, planning on making sure that uh, you, you, you deal with poverty? We have to manage the way things are done. Let's, let's look at em employment, for example. You have to m make sure that you, you bring in employment. Our, our highest levels of employment were probably in 2000, And there's been a slide. Mm -hmm. Companies have closed. If you drive around our industrial areas, there are buildings that are li literally closed mm -hmm. with machines inside. We have to start, although we have done, we are doing that ourselves. We have to start by finding out why have companies closed. Mm -hmm. What is the environment that they don't like? Is, is, is our company ready for business? Or is it supportive of business? That's the starting, the starting point. Mm -hmm. I've had occasions to, meet, to sit in meetings where an investor was coming and was describing the profits that he would make, for example, from investing in a certain infrastructure project. Mm -hmm. And I've had certain officials, technocrats, saying the profit is too much. And the guy goes away. Mm -hmm. How do you determine whether the profit is too much? The guy brought out his dollar. Even if it's a dollar that he invested, it's his dollar. Let's respect it. So Bo once said, when we bring these people to build our railway lines and so forth, mm. and we use them for a certain number of years, when they go back, will they take the railway lines with them? And someone said no. So he said, let's let them in. Mm. Let them in. Let them, let, let them invest. Let, but let's create the conditions for people to invest. 
not just foreigners. The best conditions mm. that we should create are for our own people. Yeah. Our people must be the ones to invest more than, than, than those coming from outside. When your people are not uh, investing, there is something wrong. When your people prefer to buy an aeroplane instead of uh, starting a milling plant in, in Mashingo, there is something wrong. You might say we love luxury too much. No. I want to invest where I can enjoy my money. Where, if, if, if I invest a dollar, mm. I can get a return from it. That is driving pleasure. Whereas if you invest that dollar somewhere else, you are not assured of your returns. Mm. Let's assure people that they can get what they hope for when they come here. For example, the issue of uh, repatriation and so forth. Mm. Some of this need, need, needs to be looked at. But I'll go back to say, how do you intend to do that? Because that question I didn't answer. Yes. You asked it to, to before this one. Mm. You see, we might think that people are very difficult to deal with. They are not. Hmm. It's the language that makes it difficult to deal with people. When you walk into parliament and they're shouting at each other, you know why they can't work with each other. Mm -hmm. But when they don't shout at each other, in their days like that, they make progress. There was progress when there was a suggestion from a political party mm. that we should buy cars for MPs so that they can access their communities. Mm. There was no noise. <laughs> because yeah. before, no MP received a car from government. Mm. It's a recent phenomenon. And I think you know when it started. Mm. When opposition got into parliament, that's when they said, how do we get into our constituencies? How do we develop them? Even the issue of CDF, it was a change that was brought from the MDC, which is a positive change. Mm. Even the issue of vehicles, I'm not saying it's bad, it's a positive change. But I am saying when they talked about things that they were going that, to that, get. That benefit them. There was no noise. Yeah. When there is talk of increasing uh, the wages or whatever they get, or whatever it is called. There is no unanimous uh, agreement. Yes. So I am saying if we are talking about development mm. and not about personalities, there should be agreement. Mm. So let's talk talking about personalities. Mm -hmm. They are not our business. Okay. Our business is developing this country. Mm. That personality will die or will leave office or will come into office. All those are possibilities. Mm -hmm. But even if they are in office, they are not our issue. We will not focus on them. We will focus on what they produce, mm -hmm. not, not on themselves as people. So our focus is on, on development. That's how we we'll change this. In other words, we will make sure that we develop our youth for employment mm. and make sure that we assist companies to take, because our youth are now too many, degreed and undegreed, but who can all get into employment? Companies cannot take these people because their profits are already too low. Our prices are already too high. That's we go and buy outside. Mm. So in order to help them reduce their cost of production, there has to be an, a, a time when government must assist companies to take our unemployed graduates. It is certain more, a salary where government chips in. Mm -hmm. ZipDev should do that. They, it's one of their mandates. Mm -hmm. In terms of training, when you take in an intern, they can provide part of the, of, of the wage for that intern. Mm -hmm. Maybe you provide $50, they provide 100 mm. So if, if I'm listening to you correctly, you, you, you're saying we have institutions, but those institutions are not performing. Like, like you rightly bringing an example of uh, ZipDev. Yes. They are not performing because maybe, I, that's why I go back to governance systems. Mm. How is this institution managed? What amount of freedom? Because when I talk about freedom, I'm not talking about the freedom of the individual alone. I'm talking about the freedom of these institutions. Mm. Are they really able to perform their work without interference? Yeah. Can we count their input as their own? Low or high? Is it their own? Because sometimes when things are tough, they are assisted unreasonably to do something. And you end up with a product, mm -hmm. which is good. But how much has gone into it? How efficient was it? And when things are normal, they are allowed to run and sometimes controlled. Yeah. I know. But I also know the institutions themselves are to blame. But not necessarily the institution as an institution. Mm -hmm. But I mean individuals. Yeah. I gave an example this afternoon of a situation where I met, where a minister would come and give an instruction to say, can you do this? Mm -hmm. And the CEO of an institution would come to the office and say, 
quickly, let's do this, let's do this, the minister wants it. And then you'll say, no, let's advise the minister, it's not possible, this is the right way. He said, mm. no, 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 the minister said it. So you are looking at a CEO, at a director, or at a manager of an institution, who is incapable. So it's not the institution, per se. Mm -hmm. How do we uh, decide on the human resource that goes into that? It's a lot of things. Maybe mm -hmm. there's patronage involved. Yeah. But when we look at the development, I will not look at where you come from in order to put you at the head of a certain institution. I will not look at what you tell me that pleases me mm. in order to put you at the head of that institution. I would look at what, what you tell me that angers me, but which makes the country go forward. You must insist, mm. if you are a good engineer, if you are a good economist, if you are a good finance person, you must insist on what you believe is right. I worked with a very senior person who said to me, Wilbert, if your boss tells you, I want you to do this in, in three days, I want it in my office, and you think that it can only be done in, in ten days, tell him it can't be done in three days, otherwise you get nothing in three days. Mm. If he insists, ask him to do it himself. I said, can I be that brave? <laughs> I said, yes, you should be that brave. Yeah. Because at that point, he will listen to you. Mm. In other words, let's not lie. Yes. to government officials. Mm. Let's not lie to ministers yeah. about what is possible mm. and what is not. So I, I obviously am I'm going to come to uh, the issue of um, the, the, the clear political ideology of the party. But before we go there, let's, uh, let's deal with the question of um, uh, industries that uh, are closed, people are out of work, like you said. And the excuses that we've had are that uh, there are sanctions. And we want to, to find out your position as a political party with regards to sanctions imposed on this country. There are many factors. But what you need to do, if our universities were credible, is to do research mm. in terms of the extent of sanctions. Mm. But, but on the effect of the yeah, But I I'm, I'm answering that question. We want to know but if because you, you agreed that sanctions have been imposed on this country and they are a hindrance to, to the development? Not, not a hindrance, but they have been imposed. Okay. I agree they have been imposed, yeah. but not a hindrance. Okay. You can move ahead. The president, on his inauguration, said we will move ahead with or without sanctions, which <laughs> means he knew they are there, mm. but we can, we can make progress even mm. in their presence. Smith made, made, I'm not, I don't praise him. Mm. He made my life a hell. But I'll give you an example. There was a, a company called Cluster Foundries. Mm. It's a foundry uh, that's a, a, a very uh, opposite to this school in, in close to campus, this private school. Mm. That's the company that made uh, Smith make all those military vehicles the very strong. I've never seen them anywhere, actually. Mm. I think you know them with mm. this shape. Yeah, yeah. They did that during sanctions. Mm -hmm. What I think we are not doing is to make use of the people around us that can do it. But I also think we have stopped training the people who must do that work. We are training people with degrees. Mm -hmm. I don't think they are very useful in, in, in terms of industry. Yeah. We need to go back to resuscitate our industry, mm -hmm. to bring up the journeymen, to bring up the apprentice. Mm. To and bring the, up the, the hands-on people. And the question still remains, how are we going to be able to resuscitate industry if we have a, a sanction? I have said our companies have gone down because they, sometimes they are unable to produce at those costs. And I have mm, said we'll mm. start with the Zimbabwe. Yeah. We'll ask them to employ more at a lower cost because they are trainees. Mm -hmm. But we know a trainee can produce more than a graduate sitting there because he's working every day for eight hours. Right? As long as you eat for eight hours, you can do that. So the starting point is to ask Zimdev to come to the rescue of the country. That's the starting point. Okay. And that can happen within the first three months. Because there are graduates all over. If a package can be produced where you can assist companies to employ people who are not necessarily experienced to produce at maximum efficiency, take, ask them to take these people. So they will come back because you are reducing their cost of production. When you reduce their cost of production, they can be able to export because their product now becomes competitive. Mm -hmm. We have a role to play in making sure the cost of production goes down. Mm -hmm. I know we put the duties on this and so forth, and we think we are making money through those duties, which get paid sometimes in RTGs. Mm -hmm. We are not making any progress. 
We have to whether how much progress are we losing by charging so much duty on things that are going to be used in production. I know they've removed duty on other things here and there, yeah. which is a good thing. Mm. How do you protect an industry that's not producing at the right cost? We must produce at a cost which is affordable to our people first and foremost. Yeah. And at which we can export to outside the country. At prices lower than those in South Africa. Because if you export at a price which is equal or, or higher, you can't export. So we have to encourage our companies to open mm. on the promise and a, a definite program that they will be supported to produce at costs that will allow them to export at a profit. Mm -hmm. I may not be able to say it here for reasons that if I, we are 15 months away from an election. Yeah, yeah. But if it was not going to come out of this, I would probably talk to you about it. That but, this but, is what we have. Yeah, but, but, but generally, is, the policy... You're talking, talking the to, the, policy to the electorate is, now. Yes. And you are selling your political party to the electorate. And these are the things that you need to be talking about. See, specifically, these are the issues that we're dealing with. If, but, if I'm going to be voting but for you, answer, I, must, I mustn't have any gray area in so far as the problem that you But to, to an industrialist and to a person, yeah. the answer is complete. What is not there are the details. In other words, the policy mm -hmm. cannot contain the details because the details are figures, mm -hmm. which I could give you. Okay. Uh, but the fact that we have said we will try to assist our industry, mm -hmm. both functioning and closed. Closed to open up. Yeah. Functioning to reduce their costs. Because cost is our biggest. When you look at the cost of our road here, at some point when I was at the IDBZ, mm we discovered that the cost of our road here was about double that of the road in South Africa. But my own analysis, which could be have been wrong, mm. was that our wages are contributory. But our wages are contributory. They have to be high because the cost of the good that you buy is also high. So you are competing with the price of a good. But sometimes the cost of a good is also the result of the wage. So mm. there must be an agreement between the industry and the government and the worker that you don't necessarily need a high wage in order to afford a product. Mm. Mm. When I was earning $200, I had problems finishing it. <laughs> it was a lot of money. <laughs> you get my point? The challenge is finishing hey, it. We've got this problem that we think a high wage mm. is what you need. But a high wage results in a, in a high price. Yeah. You get my point. So there is also need for some education. But to arrive at this, I was talking about youth development and employment. Yeah. Our youth have not worked for a long time. We need to make sure that they are ready to get into employment. Mm. So we need to develop them for that. And the starting point is the same time. And other institutions, all companies must play a part in taking up these youths. Mm -hmm. And the youths must accept that I can work for $200, 200 US yeah. dollars. Yeah. and survive very well. I can work for 150. Someone was telling me $155 is a, is a very good salary in mm. Mozambique. And I know that people in China who are buying cars, some of them at the lowest level, 120, 150 is a good wage yeah. to get a loan to buy a car. It's because the cost of production has gone down mm. and they can afford everything else. So when we train the youth for employment, they get employed. After five years, two, three years, a quick learner, like uh, I know, mm. a good engineer within two years might not have a lot to learn. Three, four years, unless he's going into project management, into financial modeling, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Within five years, our youth have learned how to handle money, how to do this, they mm. understand this and that. You then encourage them to start companies. Because the only companies that can make this country go forward are not the existing ones, the old ones. Mm. It's the new ones. Because they are the ones that are creating new employment. Like I said, the old companies have no capacity to grow yeah. unless they diversify. That's why you see Panasonic into, is into everything. They were trying to remain really? young. Mm. Yeah. That's why you see the Sony's are doing everything. You get a product, it's Sony, it's Sony, the microchip is Sony, the ship is Sony. Mm. So from the microchip to the ship, they are producing it. Mm -hmm. It's because they are trying to remain young and therefore beca remain more mobile. When you become an old company, it takes time even for a grievance to be heard by the chairman. Mm. We want these young companies that are more mobile, grievances are heard, changes are made very quickly. Mm. But they also create employment. 
If we get, we've got more than 10,000 graduates or 50,000 that have not seen employment. Mm -hmm. If you can combine this and start 20,000 companies, for example, and they employ each five people, mm -hmm. you are close to a million employees. So we need the new companies. We need to support our young people. Not mm -hmm. to give them money during elections, no. To train them so that they can run companies. Yeah. They can employ 10, 20, 30 people, like you are doing here. Mm. This is what we want. New companies, new fields of entrepreneurship, and so forth. But there are also old field, fields of entrepreneurship where you get things like uh, your supermarkets and so forth. They can also do that. Yeah. After all, they've been doing it. They've been selling tomatoes by the roadside and you buy tomatoes in okay. There's no difference between that tomato and that one. It's mm. just the, the size of the organization. He's the only one at the road. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> so if you, because they already know where to order their bread, these tax shops and so forth, that's mm -hmm. your starting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we are going to be reading uh, co questions and comments from our listeners and our viewers. Uh, if there are any questions, we then are going to allow um, Engineer Baiwa here to respond to those questions. But let me uh, read some of uh, the uh, comments that I have here. Someone says, this is a teacher on a chari. Uyu arinani kudarika bambu wima zero. Munyaradzi Chanai was says, laughs at that uh, comment. Uh, Victor Mugwisi, better than a bunch of fools. Um, I, I, I would want us then to, to deal with this one. Yes. Uh, where he says it's better than a bunch of fools. Uh, doing great and explaining it as it is engineer, I think I love this. Munyaradzi uh, Chanaiwa Uyu Akaenda Kuchikoro. Those are some of the, the comments that uh, we have uh, here. But uh, there is a comment that says uh, better than a bunch of fools. And when we started this program, you, you spoke about this kind of language, yes. right? To say as, as a political party, you, you want to, to move away from the, the, the kind of language that uh, um, plants hate, hate. Definitely want to move away from it. Mm. Because you can also see what he means by a bunch of fools and better than this. But in your home, in your private home, mm. you should be able to be open with your children yeah. and to tell them that this is nonsense. Mm -hmm. This is rubbish. Mm -hmm. This is awkward. This can work. But you tell them that when you go into the public, First, listen to the opinion of the guy that you are meeting yeah. before you tell him yours. And find a language that's good enough mm -hmm. to make sure you continue dialogue with that person. Because if you call him a fool in his face, yeah. maybe the next dialogue is a patch. That's what we are trying to avoid. Mm. But uh, I'm taking this, yes, it's going to go public. But this is someone in his home who is saying this. Mm. I have no problem with any, any individual in Zimbabwe being free to say that. But I am saying when we move as a political party and we are meeting other political parties mm. and their supporters and so forth, we should not say that kind of language to them. But any citizen, I have no problem with him calling me a fool. Mm. We, let's say I am president of this country and someone says, you are a fool. Mm -hmm. I should not have a problem with, with that. I just want him to explain how I can turn out from him being a fool to a great man. Mm. Because <laughs> if he thinks I'm a fool, he must know the solution to me being a, a non-fool. Mm -hmm. It's not this kind of comment in the manner it is produced that I was referring to. Mm. I was referring in public, okay. where we exchange bad words in public. Mm -hmm. It's like exchanging bad words in front of your children. Mm. That should not happen. Yeah. But I know people are angry. People say things. I didn't like it when, for example, people were arrested for saying Mugabe is like this in a bar. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the need. And I didn't see the benefit. Yeah. I still don't see that, that benefit in the public. Yeah. Uh, because we, we, we are almost uh, coming to the end, I want uh, to, us to deal with a, a few issues. Uh, let me read these ones. Uh, you are talking uh, the truth, men, and uh, the other one, a citizen change, says, Pabuda ume wafuti. <laughs> yeah, we expect that. <laughs> yeah. Referring to, to your party, obviously, uh -huh. uh, that uh, 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 you have mushroomed again. So the, I think the question there is we have seen a number of political parties uh, coming up, mm -hmm. especially towards uh, uh, election. any election in this country, a general election, that is. And the, the question will be, is that, is that healthy for 
our body polity, first of all, it is very healthy. Because it's like someone who starts a shop and gets nothing. They know they must get out of business. When a, that's why we said we saw parties, an mm. entire leader. Yeah. I got more votes as an independent candidate mm. than 70% of the presidential candidates countrywide. And I said, countrywide, they get 3,000 votes. Mm. And I get 8,000 votes in one constituency. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? It's necessary in the early stages of democracy mm. that people must be given the freedom to start what they want. Mm -hmm. It is very necessary. But it is also very necessary to learn. So when we started, we say we talked to every political party, the small ones, to say, yes. we don't want a coalition of each other. Mm. We want to fold and start one thing. We've managed to a certain extent. Some have come and said, let's join hands. Yeah. So with the experience, they will discover it's not necessary. And our democracy will mature because of that. Because it's from the experience. Mm. The son will know my father did this and he got 2,000 votes. I must not do the same thing. I must look for a partnership that lasts. Mm -hmm. I must so if, if people reject you in uh, 2023, mm -hmm. as uh, um, you are going into the election, are you going to, and to pull out? And I don't get, for example, 8%. Yeah. If I don't get to 8%, mm. I'll consider myself as a leader of NPC who has not managed to convince the electorate. Okay. And I'll step down and allow the next guy mm. to come in. We are looking at this thing this way. I'm trying to quote someone. When we yeah. choose leaders, and we're still looking for leaders, because we started by looking for leadership. That's why we've done some work already over three years. Mm -hmm. When you are looking for leaders, and you are the president, and your level of capacity is there, yeah. make sure your vice is at the same level, or just slightly lower. Mm -hmm. So that when you start doing your work, he will grow faster than you, because he's learning from you. So when you fall or resign, you're already starting from way up there. You use that experience to go forward. Mm. But if I don't get 7.5%, 8% in the next election mm. and fail to cause change, then I'll, I'll allow the next guy or whoever is elected by our next Congress mm -hmm. to take over. I'm not that kind of person who stays longer. I have never wanted to stay in any job for more than seven years. Mm. And I have never done that. <laughs> okay. Except if it's my own company. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to, uh, obviously we are going to look at that uh, when uh, uh, that, come, uh, that time comes, where we say, in, uh, engineer, you, you're still uh, uh, hanging on to the presidents of the party, but you promised us that you were going to leave. Now, uh, we want to, to move on to uh, other issues. Uh, quickly, if someone asks you to say, what is your political ideology as a party? Ideology is a very fluid word. Mm. To a certain extent, I've already described it. Mm. But, yeah. but um, we, you don't have time. You have to explain to me. I'm uh, you cannot say I'm socialist if that is an ideology mm -hmm. or am I capitalist. Mm -hmm. But I would say, like I said, I'm a, a, a centralist. centralist. I am an idealist. Mm -hmm. I look at a given situation and deal with it according to that. I will not keep it to an idea that's not working mm -hmm. because it's what I started with. Yeah. That's me. In other words, change is what defines our ideology. Mm -hmm. Change not in terms of uh, just people. Mm -hmm. Change in the way things are done. Things in the way the country is governed. Yeah. So uh, uh, now uh, let's also move on. It's to not in your normal books uh. because they were never written by us. Mm -hmm. We have a chance to do our own research mm -hmm. and create our, our own our ideology. Own ideology yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2023, and uh, w what is it that you're looking at as a political party in terms of um, uh, votes, numbers? We are looking at, uh, preferably, a figure of 27%. 27%. That one would definitely change the country. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at a minimum of 8.5%. We want to match Makoni. Mm. We can't be like Tekere who got 33%. <laughs> well, why, why do you want to match uh, Makoni? Because he caused change. The government of national unity that we got mm -hmm. was as a result of Makoni's performance. He did not participate. Mm -hmm. He made sure no one got 50 plus 1 percent. Yeah. And when you do that, you force people to unite. But our ideology, which we may not implement, and in terms of our philosophies, we think we don't want a system of governance where people are selected ministers mm -hmm. on the basis that they are members of parliament. If there is no one suitable in the parliament, 
The Constitution must allow us to go out there and pick among executives to say these are our executives. These are, our these are going yeah. to. The Constitution must allow that. Mm. And I'll tell you what it does. It frees the politician to be on the ground. And uh, it makes sure resources are distributed equitably because no politician, as a minister, is going to favor his party or himself. Mm. Like they do in America, a secretary of, uh, uh, of the, the state secretary comes from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is your view of uh, the, the, the political landscape in the country in terms of, uh, a, do, do you think that it's, it's, it's a free uh, space where people can exchange and uh, uh, cross-pollinate ideas? In terms of cross-pollination, there is nothing. Because sometimes there is a, no idea being put across. It's just a head speech. Mm -hmm. I want you to go through the speeches. Yeah, yeah It's just a, saying, you said this last week, and uh, it was stupid, it was like this. I listened to it mm -hmm. in the last election. In terms of uh, whether it's a level playing field, I would like to think you, we can level it. Because we know ZANPF has got its own strength. I'm sorry I'm mentioning that. It, it's not my intention. Yes, but, but I'm so sorry. you're saying at the moment it's not level. Well, it's never level when you're getting in. Okay. So don't expect it to be level. Mm -hmm. Because whoever is holding on to his strength <laughs> yeah. will keep holding on to his strength. Mm -hmm. Your main objective is not to destroy his strength because you don't know how he got them. Even if you know. How do you get to where he got them? Your main objective is to raise your own level of performance to bring out your own strengths, mm -hmm. different as they may be, in terms of, like ideology, for example, like policy perspective, mm -hmm. like policy prescriptions, and so forth. So that uh, to the electorate, you now have a strength which is higher. So you build your own strength. You cannot destroy the other man's strength. Mm -hmm. You can't. You don't know how you got them. It's like marketing when you're selling any product. You cannot destroy a uh, okay strength or a, uh, leave a brother's strength and so you can't because as they are as they grew they are still producing more and they are still designing more ways of producing a better product mm -hmm. but you're starting at a level where you know their product aim to produce the product that's selling faster for mm -hmm. them at the moment without worrying about their strength mm -hmm. because we, the technology is there that being the case are we likely going to see zanu pf out of power anytime soon Yes, and you know, Explain. because I don't see, mm -hmm. to be honest, mm -hmm. I don't see any party getting 50 plus 1 percent. Including ZANU PF? Including ZANU PF. In 2023, that is. If, if we get any love, how do they get 50 plus 1 percent? They can't. Well, because you would have gotten 27. Yes, or 8 and a <laughs> half. And the other guys would have gotten their 3 and a half. Because you see, if we get their, their 3 and a half and our 8 and a half, yeah. we are at 14. Okay. Right? Mm. And if we get, uh, uh, once you get 14, you now have 70, you now have 86 to go. Mm. And if Chamisa performs the way he did, mm. then Zanfiev is below 50 plus 1 percent. In other words, that's the mess that you must do. Go into your office, work mm. out these things. Mm -hmm. Find out how you can take the people that are interested. Make them interested. Mm. But the math, do, do you think this math uh, uh, does uh, speak to the people who vote? It does. Why it does? Mm. You must find out the reason why you are losing. Because I think people are giving the wrong reasons for losing. Hmm. Yeah. If you focus on saying this was done to me, tell people what you did, that it did not work. And what you are going to do the next day hmm. that you think is going to change the fortunes. I will give an example of one word, if I'm going to leave this yeah, place. Yeah. Yeah. We went to a certain word five days before election. Mm -hmm. And the people said, no, it's during the day. We can't speak with you. But there has never been any opposition party here or a candidate. You are the first one. This was at the border between Gurue South and Mtora mm -hmm. So we went there with him mm. during the night. And we met about, uh, I think there were about 15, 20 people. They said, no, we like your idea. Mm. We sell it to others. On that particular polling station, yeah. we won. But we only visited it five days before election. Mm. But, that but convinced me that you need to get to the people. What most people do, they mm. fill stadiums yeah. and think everyone is listening. When you fill a stadium, not everyone there coming is coming to watch you, just like a soccer match. Mm. There are supporters of other parties and other people there. Mm. So if you get 100,000, say maybe 40,000 are mine, go to the small place. That's where the votes are. You know very well, 
more, more than about 60 something percent of our voters are, the, are in the rural areas. Mm. Get there, get it to the small center. I don't think uh, these parties have done that. In fact, only two parties have held campaigns towards elections, ZANPF and MDC. The rest yeah. have not. So how do you expect to get something? We are saying we'll get to the people. Mm -hmm. We'll go there, even if it means we walk there if we don't have cars, mm. because our funding is coming from us. Okay. If it means you ask our people to walk to every small township, we will walk there. All right. Uh, let's uh, end it here. And uh, it was a quite interesting discussion. He says that if as a political party, they do not get 8% of uh, the vote in 2023, he is going to quit as uh, the leader of uh, the uh, National People's, People's Congress. Congress yes. And uh, we are going to see if he is going to stick to his word. My name is Perfect Longwane. Thank you so much, Engineer, for your time. And uh, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you, Perfect. Yes, I, yes. I enjoyed the discussion. Never start anything in order to, to fail. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Never start anything in order to fail. We meet again on other programs. Remember that uh, this is a program that we bring to you weekly. It is called The Candidate here on Sly Media TV. And it's a program that brings on uh, to this platform uh, candidates from various political parties to deal with the issues uh, of uh, their plans, their manifestos, and uh, programs that they have for the citizens of Zimbabwe. Have a good evening. <laughs>